As O.J. Simpson wakes up in a toasty eternal sauna, we all remember the day he got away with it. It was also the day that wannabe killers everywhere learned that all they needed was enough dough to hire Robert Shapiro. I was on air at MTV, a fledgling know-it-all distracted from the day job, with one eye trained on the televised double murder trial, assuming, like everyone, that a guilty verdict was a slam-dunk sealed deal. It's hard to put into words how colossal the figure OJ was. A superstar athlete, brand ambassador, actor. Like Travis Kelsey, but much less hairy. Then the verdict came down and everything flipped like Teresa Judici's kitchen table. Surely, a man even such a famous one, who beat his wife for years and then killed her and her friend, leaving a terrible treasure map of blood and DNA, goes to prison for a long, long time? I was so shocked and upset I could hardly speak to Lily Taylor, the actress I was interviewing about her upcoming film. I fought back tears. Lily put her hand on mine and tried to comfort me. My god her palms were calloused. I knew she was a talented actress, but was she also a pipe fitter? OJ's dream team of lawyers had opened an unholy box, namely Pandora's, and convinced a Los Angeles jury still hot from the city's recent race riots, following the LAPD beating of African-American Rodney King that bigoted cops were at it again. They'd also ushered in the era of the televised celebrity trial, aka justice by public opinion. You're welcome, Michael Jackson and Johnny Depp. The trial also gave America the Kardashians. Another injustice I won't soon forget. A few years later, I came face to face with the culprit who'd upended my MTV interview. I was shopping at a bookstore in LA International Airport, looking for a copy of Runner's World magazine, and backed into a man still on the run in plain sight. OJ saw me recoil in horror and gave a weird aw shucks, yeah it's me look. I was bursting with fury and ready to barf, but all I could muster was one angry barb. God help you. Simpson cocked his head, furrowed his brow and his eyes went cold, which was my cue that this squeeze would not be worth the juice. Suddenly, I remembered those famous Hertz commercials, OJ hurtling suitcases and dodging travelers as he dashed through a crowded airport. As it turned out, he was on crutches with what appeared to be an injured leg and could hardly chase me. But I sped up anyway. I wasn't taking any chances. More moons passed and I happened to move down the street from OJ's Brentwood estate and the condo where his wife Nicole and Ron Goldman were brutally slain. A coincidence I only realized after the fact. Everyone in that neighborhood knew OJ. The charmer, the coke fiend, the violent vagrant. People whispered, but somehow he got a pass from all those who shared his Prosecco and a bump of disco dust in the bathroom at Mr. Chow. 
when you're famous you get everything, even acquitted. And, eventually, a visit from the Grim Reaper, too.